Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about Rust and Discord. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what do you think about the article why Discord is switching from Go to Rust? Well, uh, I think it's nice to see that Rust can shock down another success case uh, because these are the sorts of things that makes the difference when it comes to adoption rate. It's not the only thing that makes a difference, but it is an important factor to have different companies and ideally a little bit famous companies to say endorse a language. It's a it's a big deal for a lot of people because developers are completely objective and never get influenced by hype. So with that said though, I want to bring in my perspective on these these articles because now I've counted three and there are more I promise you there are more than the three that I've read but there are three of these now that have spurred to varying degrees of success a change in value system for the communities uh, for the IT community so the fact that Discord is going from Go to Rust needs to be put into perspective. And the perspective that you may not actually think about if you don't read the article and really read between the lines is that they're actually not saying that they're moving over from Go to Rust necessarily. They have tried to build one service in Rust. And that was a success case, and they really like, uh, and they even go as far as to explain that they had to actually go through a few hurdles in order to make it work, which is something that we should touch on as well when it comes to should you go into Rust or should you not go into Rust? Because now I'm kind of spoiling the ending for you because I want you because anybody, the majority of people who are don't, who don't know any better will read an article heading I can title like this and go oh shit I should now invest in Rust because it's clearly taking over the same thing happened with uh, Uber Uber had an article which was l practically the same thing you can basically just change out the names and it would be the same article where they explained that oh we're well the title stated we're moving from I think it was Node over to Go and people went on the hype train and said, oh, it's Go is taking over. This is proof that this is taking over. If you actually read the article, it actually states that they had a service. And I, if I remember correctly now, it was for geolocation or something like that, which they rewrote in Go because Node wasn't performant enough. And this was a high frequency, like a, there was a hot path in their system to, uh, through this service. That didn't mean that they rewrote the whole system. It just mean, means that they rewrote that service. And then you have, I mean, if you, for those of you who are really old, you'll remember that Node.js had the exact same thing before Go. So we're just really, for me, uh, the red thread here is that we're just trading what we're hyped about. And I hope that you, sh you should start noticing this if you stay in the industry for a, l a little bit. Because, I mean, Netflix went along and made basically the same article for Node. I think that they, sw I can't remember what they switched from or why they invested in Node, but the, the, it's the basic, it's the same pattern over and over and over and over again, where you have someone who writes an article stating that, hey, we tried this thing out, it was really cool and really awesome, and if they're famous enough or it's a big company, people go, oh, this is now taking over. It's not. It's just, uh, if you look at the adoption rate of uh, node in back-end development there is absolutely a presence it's fair like i mean javascript does have a presence but it's not like this is the only thing in town it's not even like node is not at the top of the scale if we talk about back-end languages and the same thing goes for i mean go is like almost hilariously under under adopted if you look at the job posting i don't and i've said this before the job po availability of a language is the most accurate benchmark that you can look at in terms of figuring out if a language is worth your time or your investment unless as i've said before you're actually into more specific things for job employment employment options and things like that this is the number it's the it's the gold standard of numbers that you should be looking at how many people are actually using this out in the industry this is the adoption rate this is the real adoption rate it doesn't matter if there's a million people who do small hobby projects that means that there all that really tells you is that oh this is a really cool language i wish that we had the guts or we had the ability 
to invest in it and actually make it part of our business model or to, to make it part of our business and most pe most companies will not do that and they certainly didn't do it for Go. There are companies who are using it but it's not that adopted. The same thing is true with Rust. I would even go one further and I would say that Go is probably more adopted than Rust, Rust in the, at this point. That's it may not be accurate but like Rust has an even more niche use case because it's actually developed to be a system levels develop a system levels language and Go is actually designed to be a web oriented language which is a very good bet if you want adoption right because web is the biggest game in town so if you can claim web as a programming language you basically claim everything well not everything because system levels development is very specific but this is what makes me really happy because I really love Rust I think it's uh, I've said this before I believe uh, because in the discussion between Go and Rust for me there's no competition Rust is the most important programming language that we have today there are no contenders for the position that Rust is uh, uh, I hope will claim and the position I hope that Rust will claim is uh, the closest thing that we have ever gotten to uh, having a universal programming language. I don't think that it's necessarily a good thing to have a completely universal programming language or that it's even possible but Rust is the closest thing and the performance benefit here is something that definitely weighs heavy. The thing that Rust on the other hand is lacking is the I mean the learning curve is much steeper for Rust than it is for say Go or Ruby or Java or things like that so there that's the thing that is a little bit mm, I don't, I'm not sure if Rust is going to get to a point where it becomes like the default for web development, but I want to believe that we can get to a point where people who are a little bit invested in technological improvement, uh, like reaping the benefits of and compromising a little bit on the uh, on 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 the boilerplate stuff. I mean, if you're gonna run a company, just a standard IT company or a standard consultancy, you're gonna bet on the safe, obvious thing. You're gonna bet on C Sharp or Java or something like that. But I th there are quite a lot of companies who are actually into tech, and I want Rust to become their first choice. The ones that are a little bit braver and actually want will and then reward that because I believe that Rust. W if you invest in Rust. Not today, because it's too early, but once it gets to the point where it needs to be, I believe that you will be rewarded many times over if you actually invest in if you invest in Rust. Not just from a performance perspective, but from a like reducing bugs and um, costs. I mean, just the fact that you can memory manage at the level that Rust that you can in Rust will off the bat give you the ability to run on the low at the lowest costs. Like you have. Well, you have a little bit of overhead, but you have a, 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 it's like practically no overhead to the to the code that you're writing, which is a very good good thing if you're in concerned about costs, which is something that really matters at scale. The thing that I think though uh, though that should happen before we go on the uh, get on the hype train with everybody else and says that Rust is taking over because people are well they're not really saying that. I don't really think that we need a hype train for Rust because Rust is already if we look at the polls the most beloved language on the planet right now. As far as I, if we look at Stack Overflow, it's the most beloved language, it's the most uh, uh, everybody loves it. So the, the, the heart is there. The thing that we don't have is the maturity. We need to get the ecosystem to a point where it's fairly, I can mean, where you can be as productive in Rust as you can be in Go, or you can be in. Well, I'm not gonna say C sharp, but I hope that you get my drift. It's we need to get to a point where you can see look at Rust as a very feasible so choice. You're you don't have to like go through a lot of hassle. You can set up a web project or something like that and be fairly productive and produce a, a web server or an application in about the same sort of time you would expect in most other languages. If you get to that point, then yes, I believe that, th that that's the point where I think that Rust will truly, truly have a shot at taking over. So what I want you to take away from this is that I think it's really cool that Discord made a bet on Rust and that proved that they could actually make it work because we need more of these success cases if Rust is going to become a feasible strategy, a feasible option for web development. I don't think that that is the case today. I don't think you should 
get on the bandwagon and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to learn Rust because it's going to be the language of the future, because we simply don't know if that's going to happen. I really do hope that it will happen, and I think that there's a very good shot that Rust will do this. The only thing that really needs to, <clears throat> to be fixed is, number one, we need to have uh, a more mature crate system so that people can get productive quicker without having to deal with a lot of uh, a lot of hassle and number two is that we need to keep on spreading uh, awareness and knowledge share about the language because this lear the learning curve for rust is a little bit higher than in other other languages and if people don't like working in rust that's going to be a problem but if we can solve these things uh, i really believe that rust will be the like the logical option for practically all system all types of development in essence. Have a great day.